Hey everyone, welcome to the Stride to Freedom podcast. My name is Russell Benaroya, and I'm the co-founder of Stride Services, a virtual back office bookkeeping and accounting firm serving hundreds of clients around the United States. This podcast is designed to help small business owners focus on growth and innovation. In other words, focus on those things that inspired you to start your business in the first place. We call it your genius zone. We do our job on this podcast when business owners feel like they have the trust and confidence to build the right team of partners around them that will help them grow. Thanks for joining. Let's go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Stride to Freedom podcast. I am your host, Russell Benaroya. What is the Stride to Freedom podcast? Well, the Stride to Freedom podcast was specifically designed to help business leaders get and stay in their zone of genius. What is your zone of genius? Your zone of genius is that thing that you do that is so uniquely you, where you are feeling powerful, but it's effortless and you lose track of time and you wish you could spend more time in that place. And as business leaders, we often struggle to one, find our genius zone and to architect our business to stay in it. And my responsibility on this podcast is to bring leaders to the show that are in the business of helping other leaders get and stay in their zone of genius. And we have the unique a uh, gift really and privilege today to have on our guest, the person that I call like the Tasmanian devil of the IT services industry. What is Tasmanian devil of the IT services industry? This is a guy that is like everywhere. He moves fast, he makes things happen, and he is contributing to make an impact on an industry so much bigger than himself. His name is George Bardisi. George, how are you? Doing great. How are you doing today, Russell? I'm great. It's so good to see you. A little bit of quick background. George is the CEO and founder of Bevoy MSP Initiative and George Bardisi Enterprises or Bardisi Enterprises, excuse me, which he'll tell us about. And what I find so interesting about George, about you, George, is that you have a really keen sense of jumping into entrepreneurial initiatives based on what's happening in the environment. Like you're nimble and you're responsive and I'm interested to learn more about it. He's learned a lot of hard lessons over 20 years and we're gonna have a chance to learn some of those today, get a beat on what he's doing for the industry and how he helps business leaders get and stay in their zone of genius. You ready to roll? Let's rock. Let's rock. Tell me about some of those hard lessons over the last 20 years. And maybe it's in the context of your journey, but it's that always makes for such a rich introduction to who you really are. So many hard lessons. <laughs> I, I, I almost have to think hard about like the ones that bubble to the top, but here's the reality, right? Um, you can learn the hard way or you can learn from others learning the hard way. That's how I see the world. <laughs> Um, and I've done both. I would argue I've done more hard way than learning from others a hard way, at least earlier in my journey. And then obviously, as we've progressed, I've you know, hopefully matured and, and learned a little bit along the way. But <clears throat> the status quo is is real. It, mm-hmm. it, it is right. And <clears throat> no, no disrespect for the people that came before me and, you know, the companies and the people that have spent a lot of time, energy, money to, you know, build and grow and, and become like, you know, the people at the top of the food chain. Um, I guess I always said, hey, you know, people should respect people. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. And so people like any little thing along the way could be taken as disrespect. And then all of a sudden you create a rift where I guess one shouldn't exist or needed to be uh, in play to begin with. So uh, unfortunately, that's just people, right? That's not specific to our bubble, our sandbox, our industry. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Even at a young age, you know, when I was, you know, you know, in school and I was dealing with people and adults and people who are supposed to be, you know, communicated a certain way, addressed a certain way. My response was, I don't care if you're the pope, the president. Or, or the police or whoever, right? Like, we're all people. I don't understand why I can't just have a conversation with you. And apparently, you know, everybody has uh, an image in their mind of 
the right way. I guess my image is just different. Um, so I've ruffled people uh, the wrong way over the years. Um, not because I'm just, you know, playing a joker position and just trying to, you know, fire things up, but simply because I just don't understand what the problem is, right? If I have a question, I'm going to ask it. Uh, if I think there's a problem, I'm going to say it. Uh, if I think something could be done better, I'll surely share it. And like, maybe that's the Northeast way of, of life, you know, because <laughs> I'm here from, you know, Philly area. And that's just normal for me, right? Whether I'm walking down the street, I'm at a drive through ordering a sandwich, or I'm dealing with somebody in business. It's just this is how we this is how we live. So um, I, I, as I've traveled the planet, and I have, I've, you know, circumnavigated many times, um, people just receive and deliver messaging differently. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the, you know, I don't know if you want to call it emotional intelligence or whatever the the right terminology is, but yeah, I guess not everybody, you know, is just, Hey, yeah, everybody's on the same level and wants to be talked to the same way. And um, that's something that I've had to uh, learn better over the years. And I think that that's one thing that if I would tell you any other story and there's so many um, that's probably at the foundation of a lot of them. Mm -hmm. We spend a lot of time talking about uh, the world that we live in to distinguish between stories and facts. And, uh, and what I'm hearing you say is uh, we live in a world of stories, the way that we interpret what we hear from somebody else, the words are, aren't the issue. The story that we make up about the words are the issue. And like you said, Oh, some weird rift can get created. Like that's not on me. Like that's on you. Like if, if, it, if it's a problem in the way that you receive it, like, Oh my gosh, let's talk about it. But it doesn't need to promulgate some because, because the sandbox is so small. Right. Yeah. And like they say, the, it's a small world. It's true. It's getting smaller because we can communicate faster. We can get to places faster. Totally. But it also means that people can, uh, you know, can react faster. And then all of a sudden that secondary convert sweep up conversation to, you know, reset whatever was taken, however way it was, you know, you, you don't necessarily get there fast enough and then, you know, things happen. So yeah. uh, I don't know. I I'm just a facts guy. I mean, listen, I love to have fun and, you know, have a good time and like create memories like anyone else. Uh, but um, I'm a facts guy, right? I'd rather just get to the heart of the matter and talk straight. And uh, some people don't like that. Some people don't like the bl uh, blunt force trauma that we call it here in Philadelphia. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a blunt force trauma guy. I like to receive information that way. I like to give people information that way. Uh, I don't like to beat around the bush. I like to get into the meat of it and get through it. And, you know, you said that, hey, I'm a pretty nimble guy. I'm able to move quickly, make decisions quickly, you know, and kind of get into it. It's part of how that works for me, right? If I see something and I think we can action something, let's do it, right? Obviously, there's mm -hmm. always logistics and nothing's always as straightforward as you want it to be. Uh, and it's all—it's like building a, uh, anything, right? A home, a building. You always hear, oh, well, it's going to get done in this amount of time for this amount of money. No, it's always longer and it's always more. That's mm -hmm. true. <laughs> but um, I, I think the difference between a plan and somebody being able to move on their feet sometimes are di diametrically opposite you know, parts of the spectrum. You are a facts guy and you are a fast guy. So tell me about a few of the, the your businesses that you operate. Why do those exist? Why were they important to start? And what drives you to stay with so many balls in the air in any given yeah, time? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> so not to go too far down history lane, but uh, my parents immigrated into the United States. So lucky me, first generation mm -hmm. George here mm -hmm. in Philadelphia area. So, you know, knowing that, you know, you literally sell everything, you own, move to another country, start all over again, the American dream, white picket fence and money mm -hmm. grows on trees, right? Um, not so much. So um, I learned at a very young age, hey, you're going to need to do something. If you want stuff, you want to go places, you want to get things, you got to work and you got to work hard. Um, so that message was totally received. Uh, and so at a young age, I started an IT company in high school. Okay. Like wow. I was one of those kids that, you know, worked a lot. You know, I went to a uh, Catholic school. I paid my tuition from the, the, all the hours that I worked during the summertime, like probably more hours than was legal to be honest. And like, I had got, made enough money, you know, paid for my high school tuition. I'm in there. 
And then like, you know, just a crazy amount of scenarios popped up where somehow I roll into the school when it's open on a weekend. I, I run an access point into the cafeteria because somehow I wanted to get on the Internet. And at the time, you know, like I was the only kid with a laptop and uh, I got caught. And my options were to wire the rest of the school or get expelled. So I wired the rest of the school. And, you know, later on that year, I started my <laughs> IT company and started bidding on deal, you know, contracts with the school that I went to. And that's kind of how I started. I mean, there's more to that story, but that's, <laughs> that's the nutshell. So I started an IT company in high school, moved on to college, grew, 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 and eventually kind of cut my teeth. I mean, this is before managed services was a mm -hmm. was a marketing term. Cloud wasn't even a marketing term. Like, you know, this is kind of in the you know early 2000s. And then, of course, the industry grew and matured and I had to learn and grow and mature with it. So, you know, that's how I started my IT company. And then, you know, in a nutshell, for my IT company, one of the things that we struggled with and there was many things. But like when you look at the amount of time that you're spending uh, in a services business, time is money. Literally, I know it's mm -hmm. a. Hey, but it's true. And so when we look back and said, why are we struggling to profit in our IT services business? And we go back to our CRM or, or ticketing system, PSA, whatever, and we start to look backwards and where are we spending most of our time? Well, for some reason, phone system vendor management was in the top five of that list. Hmm. And it was a lot of this, right? You know, every manufacturer under the sun, this dealer, that reseller, this manufacturer, it's your problem. No, it's your problem. No, you have to, you know, let's just meet on site and figure it out instead of doing this. And then that becomes expensive and it's not manageable, scalable, it's standardiz uh, standardizable. And then all of a sudden it breaks the whole thing. So out of my IT services company, we started BVoIP as a channel only uh, unified communications voice provider who literally doesn't sell direct and only works with other IT and managed services around the world, companies around the world, because for, it just didn't seem to be solved, right? Hmm. Like, Square peg, round hole, right? You went to all these companies. They had a direct sales force. There's this like partner program over here on the side. And then like never really made sense, right? Like the business model over here is completely counter to the business model over here. And then, you know, like it's almost like, a, do I have to do this? Uh, I guess I just need to be able to raise my hand and say I can do it. And and that's not a good, like just doing something, even though it's unprofitable. Well, that's how you just don't make money. So and doesn't make sense to me. So that's why we started BVoIP. <clears throat> One of the things that we really want to solve in BVoIP, other than the business model approach to the whole story was, why is there just a complete you know, black hole when it comes to automation integration workflow between the communication systems that you use and the tools that you use to run your business? And like fast forward to 2022, we're, even though we've been building and been investing and developing this entire time from 2014 until now, 2022 as BVoIP, you know, the next, you know, set of companies behind us are so far behind because I guess there's just hmm. no interest. I don't know. Very hmm. much interest on our side. And that's where we spend a lot of our time. And then lastly, <clears throat> during the, you know, we're in pandemic times and nobody can say that they weren't in it, right? Worldwide. We're early on. We're sitting back and we're like, huh, well, I guess nothing's really happening. You know, like the last event to close down was Datacon that year. And uh, I would just, you know, in community calls, I was joking around with some of the people in there, like Ken Patterson, uh, who's been around the, the industry for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, hey, you know, if the airplane shut down, we just like get in a van and drive down to this last conference that's still running. And then like all of a sudden they're like, oh, well, you're going to have to stop by me. Why don't you pass by and pick me up? And then the van turned into an RV and an RV turned into a tour bus. And then all of a sudden <laughs> we said, hey, we can do this outside, right? We can We can successfully and safely do this air and so we started msp initiative which is a community-based approach right to the it and msp services industry and effectively said hey we can while the pandemic is, is raging on and we're all stuck you know with all these rules and inside we can go outside and we can travel the country here in the u.s and we can successfully let msps you know, host, uh, you know, basically the, in their parking lot, you know, let us borrow their their space outside and effectively bring the community together uh, in order to learn from each other and figure out what's mm -hmm. working and make sure that we're like getting out of the cave. So that's where MSP Initiative came came out of the woodwork um, in uh, I think the first time we went out was like August of 2020. And we've been on the road ever since between that and between, you know, large events, you know, and parties around conferences and, you know, bringing vendors together to kind of like, 
take some of the commercial trade show ish version of the channel and flip mm -hmm. it into more of a, Hey, let's just talk shop. Right. Like the best yeah. part of events are like the bar and the hallways and like, you know, me being able to learn from other people that are in the trench, not necessarily, you know, I'm not saying the breakouts and the keynotes and all the other stuff you see at events aren't good, but like, I want to hear from somebody who's doing what I'm doing and figure out what's real rather than here's some things to think about. Consider doing this program and setting this step and maybe adjusting this thing in your business. And you have to start here. And it's like, no, 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 no. I want to talk to somebody who's done it because that's mm -hmm. how I learn. Right. So that's the three businesses. And that's kind of how they progress through the timeline. What have you learned about yourself through this MSP initiative effort? You know, um, people, I mean, you know, it's a, as much as we in the technology space love the lights and love the, you know, the automation. And like, I grew up on Knight Rider and A-Team and like, you know, these, the, you know, you know, yeah, special gadget and all that stuff. Right. So, you know, I love that. I self-taught a lot of what I know because I was just really, really interested in it and I just couldn't yeah. stop myself. Um, but all things considered, it's really more people than it is mm. technology. Technology assists people. And once you learn that is the case, it changes your view on, you know, how, how the, th the whole world spins a little bit. So mm. I used to be the opposite way around. I used to say, ah, people, they're everywhere. Let's talk about technology. Let's build cool stuff. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, but you have to realize that, you know, technology is a tool, right? And people is what those tools are supposed to help, right? So when you flip mm. it around, I think that, you know, you'll find that there's some really resilient people out there and there's really clever, smart people out there. And, you know, when you start to collaborate with other people, so much stronger than everybody living in their own island with the, the moat and the castle around, you know, around them. So MSP initiatives really opened up the, and, and it's just kind of built on what, I've experienced, you know, through my journey, which is, hey, you know, come out and talk to people and collaborate and figure out what's good and what isn't and what works and what doesn't. And then you start to see people, you know, partner together and create cool stories and build new things. And like, it all starts with individuals. It all starts with people. Mm -hmm. Do you give people prompts at the MSP initiative, or do you just let the alchemy work its magic? Listen, you get people in a room, they're just going to kind of start to talk, or do you facilitate a little, uh, little push? Most of the time we let things happen granularly, right? I mean, uh -huh. you know, like how many times have you gone into an event and it's very structured and sometimes structure is good and, and yeah. everybody has their secret sauce. I think people just need to start you know, like as much as, you know, tech people aren't maybe the most personable people out there, maybe they need to warm up a little bit. Maybe they're a little bit better behind a keyboard than they are in person. You know, no offense to all the online communities out there and the keyboard warriors. And, you know, like it just <laughs> seems like you're a little bit more aggressive behind the keyboard than you are in front of people. Yeah, so like, that's why I want to get people in front of people, because that's when real conversation happens rather than just the rants. Yeah. What are you, what are you looking forward to, uh, at, I, I know we have a conference next week. This, this episode won't publish before that. Um, but you're out in the market, you're out in the community, you're hearing a pulse. What's going on in the industry? How are people feeling? Any kind of prediction to what 2023 might look like and any guidance or advice to business owners that are trying to figure out how to get positioned? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of thoughts out there and I have traveled quite a bit. I haven't made it down to Australia and New Zealand uh, this year, like we have in past years, pre-pandemic, but mm -hmm. I have been, you know, over to the other side. I've been over in Europe and all, all over the U S a um, couple of key themes seem to be pretty strong. One um, 2023 might not be the best financial year. Okay. Like I think everybody's re waking up to the fact that, you know, like there's an energy issue over, especially in Europe, you know, the markets are definitely, you know, in a, in a recession. I, I don't think there's any other definition. I'm sorry, everyone out mm -hmm. there who says otherwise. But so like MSPs start to think back, like I know the pandemic was like once in a hundred year thing. I think they think back to 2008. I think mm -hmm. they think back to previous kind of bad financial times. And 
what needed to be done to make it through those situations. But like, what are the opportunities come from that, right? So I think the check signers and the business owners and the decision makers are keen to the fact that one, you need to make sure your house is in order and that you're not you know, frivolously burning money in places that you shouldn't too. Um, you know, it's okay to go back and talk to your staff and your team about, you know, options, right? Rather than just assuming there's only one black or white, there's gray and you got to be willing to approach it uh, differently if you want to come out with different outcomes or else, you know, you're, you're staring the same, you know, you know, doors uh, that you mm -hmm. did before. And then the other thing is, hey, listen, you know, you know, not to be, you know, opportunist, but, you know, in the IT services space, especially managed services providers who largely have worked with companies who are maybe a little bit smaller and maybe augment things from, you know, larger companies where the internal IT team is just not capable of doing everything. And that's probably the case in a lot of areas. You know, when you go into what seems to be the period that we're about to go into and things are starting to point down, companies are starting to shrink and companies, you know, are starting to get a little bit more frugal is that the staff, you know, you know, gets cut down a little bit. And IT is one of those cut down areas. Marketing is one of those cut down areas. Sales is one of those cut down areas. But because IT gets cut down, it doesn't mean the technology still isn't being used and is not needed. It's uh, quite the opposite. So it's actually an opportunity for MSPs to benefit based on, you know, the larger companies having to, you know, make moves right? Mm -hmm. Because of the times that we're in. So there is, you know, being con and continuing to be positioned, you said early in the call, nimble, being nimble, you need to be able to pivot and position and put your nets out and be ready to capture, you know, what the business, you know, is that's going to come out of this that before you thought, hey, unattainable, they're never going to do business with us, they have everything they need, that's going to change. It's going to change. And technology doesn't stop during down periods. It actually continues, and if not, in some cases, it speeds up because there's less chatter and more people are in the lab baking things. So one of the problems in technology land, and we've seen it countless times, I'm sure you have too, is that whoever's in the chair doing the technology work and into the tech, tech technology, either buying hat or or you know implementation or whatever it is, they're too stuck in the day to day to actually stay up on the changes mm -hmm. and so it seems like year over year those changes happen faster mm -hmm. seems year over year the technology gets a little you know a little bit smarter but on a more aggressive timetable and so staying current is part of the benefit of being small and nimble right you can go to the events you can do the training courses you can get the certifications you can do the lab testing these guys just don't have time there's just not enough time in the day so you know, there's good and bad coming up. I think keeping positive is important. Being aware and intelligent about what you need to do as a business owner or decision maker is important. Understanding the market adjustments because they're going to happen quickly as time goes over the next 16 months, 24 months, very important. Staying up with the technology during that time, very important. Talking with other people in the industry is where you're going to have your best view of what's happening. So I talk to people overseas. I talk to people all throughout the country here, down under, you know, constantly understanding the little nuances happening, give you the ability to stay ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. And so talk to people. I mean, the best part yeah. you can do at any event, at any, you know, trade show, user group, um, training event, whatever, network with people and just communicate with them. Like it's so easy now to do that. And the more information you can learn from other people, the better off you're going to be. And if you're ahead of the curve, man, there's a lot of options. If you're behind the curve, there's not that many options. What are you most excited about for uh, BVoIP? What are some initiatives you're pursuing that can, in fact, help many of these MSP owners find opportunity and relief and possibility in 2023? Here's a here's the cool part about BVoIP. You know, because we've developed to where the MSP starts, right? Like we sit in their chair and say, where are they having problems, and where where can we actually start to fill in gaps? 
You know, the reality is that making the phone rings pretty easy. A lot of people can do that. And and quite frankly, it helps remote working and, and hybrid working. We know that. And sure. that's been the case way before the pandemic. Where we get super excited, where we like get up in the morning and say, man, this is really cool, is the integration and the workflow and the automation we build, not just for the MSP, but also for their end customer, man, mm. it, it, it almost makes picking up and making the phone ring like the last thing you think about. Let me give you an example. How often have you heard MSPs complain about on-call? Since I started in the business that we've been yeah. hearing about on-call, right? Yeah. So many different ways that people have tried to slice this, answering services and things yeah. like pager duty and all this other stuff. And we're just like, how about we make it really simple? Let's say somebody calls into your your your, your company and they leave a message. And we can give you a tool that will monitor those voicemails and do two things. One, when the voicemail comes in, put it into your ticketing system in the right place. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have been trying to solve that problem for years, but I don't know why it took us to get to that point. So voicemail comes in. I'm going to know the phone number because obviously we have caller ID. And we're going to say, oh, this phone number belongs to this company and maybe even this contact. And I'm going to be able to say, well, it's now put in the right place, under the right company, under the right contact. And now you're not coming into a bunch of catch-all messages, which we see every day. Two, what if like an answering service, we can text you, call you, and email you in priority of the people who are supposed to be handling those messages. And like, if you don't you know, respond and the next person gets it, and then the next person, and the next person, we'll, we'll just keep on burning cell phone batteries, no problem, until mm -hmm. somebody responds, right? Like, it seems simple, but what, why, why is it so hard to do? So like number one, number two, and then number three, call it the human being condition. What if people just really don't pay attention to when they start their shift and don't log in, right? If you don't log into your system to start receiving calls, well, then you're just sitting there. People are like not getting answered. It's such a simple thing, but it happens all the time. What if I can pre-schedule the system logging you in or out based on your shift? Mm. And then, well, let me go a step further. <laughs> what if you're logged in? And you've missed too many calls. What if I can log you out once you've hit a threshold of too many missed calls and then notify a supervisor or manager? Mm -hmm. These are the types of things mm -hmm. that we're doing. Like these are some of the more recent things, but like I'm taking human being conditions that are the pitfalls and I'm saying, well, let's fix this one. And let's fix this one. And this, let's fix this one. And now I'm fixing workflow. I'm fixing the human being element as I'm supposed to be communicating with people. But then on the back end, business intelligence dashboarding and reporting, right? We work with you know MSPs really small. We, we work with MSPs really large. And what seems to be the trend as you get into the more mature, larger MSPs is the amount of data that your customer requires from you, even just to prove that you're meeting the terms of your agreement, grow. Totally. So like, let's say if I'm an MSP and you have a, 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 an SLA set in your agreement, that's financially backed. Maybe you have to start paying money back if calls aren't answered in a timely fashion, if you didn't get back back to people in a timely fashion. You know, like, first of all, you need to be able to justify, well, did you call the right place? And did you go down the right road for me to be able to tell you, yes, I'm now on the clock? Because if you didn't, hold on a second, something's wrong. We need to fix the communication. And we all know organizations are their own living beings, right? That information may not get all the way through the org. So like, these are examples of like, you know, that's just one example of where it's like, hey, listen, I I'm selling based on an outcome, but I need to be able to measure stuff to make sure that I'm doing the job. And so that both sides keep themselves accountable. This is the type of stuff that matters, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I can't tell you how many times we talk to an MSP that is on a very basic solution. Let's call it Microsoft Teams Voice, for example. Okay. Hey, it's cool. It's in the app. It's fairly inexpensive. Like the phone rings. But like if I can't measure anything, I I'm already behind. Okay. So yeah. these are the types of things that we ultimately kind of work in day in and day out. We get super cool requests. And I have a, I have a feature request list about 230 features long. And like, MSPs are smart people and they're super clever. I mentioned this earlier. I've met clever people from all parts of the globe that just came up with stuff that I never thought of simply because maybe I never got to that point in my business to even consider the issue that they were solving. Or two, they were just really smart people that came up with answers that nobody really got to. And like, that's the cool part. So 
that's kind of where we spend a lot of our R and D and development time, right? Like I can certify every phone, device, app, headset underneath the planet. That part's the easy stuff. I want to solve actual problems. Human problems. I, lo- I love it. How do you manage your time and prioritize across your businesses? And how does that speak to or challenge your genius zone? Well, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I work. Please, way more that's what than, that's what we do here. Yeah, I wait. I work way more than a nine to five. I'll promise you that. Mm-hmm. Um, and quite frankly, it gets to the point where you can't even keep up with your own schedule. Mm-hmm. So I actually do. I mean, you know, as I've got like to this point in my business, I actually have people that are basically putting things in and out of my schedule. You know, they're actually doing all the blocking and tackling across the three organizations just because I literally do not have time to keep up with it all. And like for the first time, I'm giving people access to my mailbox where before I would never do that simply because I value getting back to people timely. And like, if you take a long time to even respond, you know, like it just shows that you're, you're breaking, yeah, the stress fracturing is occurring because you don't have the bandwidth. So mm-hmm. you do, it does require, you know, as you get to certain points, you know, kind of shedding some of the day-to-day blocking and tackling items to other people so that you can spend time on the stuff that maybe you're only good at. I can tell you, I love negotiating things. I'm a great <laughs> negotiator. I could be wrong talk to some of the people on the other side of negotiations, but like, I love that. Right. And so if I were, for example, hand somebody off one of my colleagues, Hey, go find the price on this or go see if you can get an agreement on this particular service or product. They come back and they're like, here it is. And I'm like, "Eh, let me take a shot at it. And then I come back and I'm like, here you go. And they're like, what, where did that come from? And how did you get that? (laughs) You know, like it's just kind of how I'm wired. So Like that's some of the stuff that I love doing that I'm really good at and that I find it hard to find people who can at least even come out to 80% of what I usually deliver when I'm in that chair. So like my benefit now is to be able to say, Hey, you're, you're really good at, you know, you know, uh, accounting and accounts payable receivable and that stuff go left. You're really good at scheduling, booking, and making sure that people are, you know, where they need to be from a timeline perspective. Good. Hey, you're really good at calling people to follow up on things. So you need you to go do that. And like, I break these tasks apart across different people uh, through the three organizations so that, you know, when I come back and say, where do we stand? I can quickly just get up to date and continue moving on. And that's the best way to say it. Mm -hmm. Have you implemented a a business uh, model framework, like a scaling up or EOS in your business? I haven't. And I know, uh-huh. you know, I'm behind because everybody says, <laughs> no, you know, it's not a judgment. Ask, I love I, it. They love I'm it. not criticizing. Yeah. I'm just asking. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I would say, you know, I largely, you know, I'm running up here at 150 miles per hour. Right. Yeah. So I just need like, and the people that step into my organization that, you know, are nine to five people do nine to five work. The people that step into my organizations that are aggressive and like are hungry and they quickly get promoted because I can see all of a sudden I can rely on them to to, to do decision making in a category that I just don't have time to do. And yeah. so not to borrow, but, you know, if you were at Datacon early in D.C. here in 2022, you know, Gary V was there. He was the keynote speaker. I love Gary V. If yeah. you haven't heard of yeah, Gary Vaynerchuk, I, I, go Google him, please. Yeah. You know, so one one line that came out of that, and I think the whole thing's online, so go watch it if you want. Um Hire, hire fast, promote faster, fire fastest. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. and I and I, I try to live by that. To be honest, what is a question or something that people don't usually ask you, but you you wish they would? What is a question people would not ask me that I wish you normally would? Yeah, they don't usually ask you. Maybe you're you're running so fast, like they're just you know, I don't know. They just don't ask you, but you'd love to share it if they yeah. take a moment. Simple. Why? Mm. I, 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 throughout going back to George as a really young kid to present, I'm still a pretty young guy. I would always ask why a decision was made the way that it was. I would always ask why a system is in place the way that it is. I would always mm. ask why they did things a certain way. A lot of the times the answers I get back are because that's just how it's been done for a while. Nobody's changed it. I don't like that. I think that that's just... I don't know, lazy almost. Um, yeah. No, I, I don't get asked why a lot. 
I make mm. decisions quickly. I do. Mm. You, you nailed it on the head coming into this call. I don't like to just drag things out. I like to finish it and move on. Um, but a lot of times people don't ask why. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm happy to expand. Actually, I would rather expand so that you know and so that the next time you already know where my mind is at rather than constantly asking yourself, I just don't know. He just, you know, you know, flies. That's like what he said. Way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then all of a sudden decisions made. So and then right, subsequently, and I mentioned it kind of in the beginning of this call, which is, hey, you know, like, why do I see the world that I the way that I do? Why do I respond back to people the way that I do? Why do I talk to people the way that I do? And I'm like, I'll answer every time. But like, sometimes people just absorb things in whatever filter that they see it in. And they just accept it as that is the concrete, never changing fact. And people are just not that, you know, they're, they're super malleable, right? I mean, they change all the time. I, you always hear people don't change. That's it's nonsense. They actually change all the time. But if you don't ask, the, you know, you're already behind the, 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 the thread that I've heard both in how you've architected BVOIP and the way you live your life is I, I start with the facts or I start with the data. Like we can dig into like why I think about them the way that I do, but I want to get the information out there that is objective and as transparent as possible. So then we can engage around it. We might not always agree, but at least it's there. It's there. Uh, you know, and I think you've done a nice job in BVOIP as I'm interpreting it in helping to ground stories with facts around performance and measurement. Hundred hundred percent everything you just said is yeah. true. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people um assume data is what it is. They take one version of the situation as fact where they just said it feels right. There's no facts behind it, but I'm just going to run with it. Right. And like that fudgeness of, of what people consume as data is dangerous. And if you start making decisions off of that, you're already a, you're already in the wrong spot. You, you don't even know what you're doing because you're working off of a false floor. So I'm a data guy. I yeah. want to know the information. I want to know the facts. I want to know the timeline. You know, people uh, who know me well would say that I missed my calling uh, that I shouldn't have gone into technology. I should have been an attorney. Uh, <laughs> that I play a really good one on TV. TV. Okay, that's cool. Um, and I like it's not because I just love arguing. It's that like you're saying one thing, but the information is like completely the opposite. These two things do not coexist. Like it just can't be. George, how do people catch up with you? Keep up with? Well, they may not keep up with you. How do they catch up with you? Where are you? Where do they find you? Sure. I mean, listen, I don't even do the crazy handles. My my handles on all the platforms are G as in George and my last name, Bardisi, B-A-R-D-I-S-S-I. -S -S so if you just follow me at G Bardisi on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and all the platforms, right? And I post quite a bit as I'm traveling throughout the world. And if nothing other, it's, you know, you can see me getting into trouble as I'm going through airport security, getting stopped, you know, for some reason for the hundredth time. So I definitely <laughs> post a lot through the platforms and that's cool. That's how those platforms grow and exist. And I surely use them for that, for that purpose. You know, my three companies, again, Bardeasy.net is my IT services company that's local here to Pennsylvania, Philly region. Bvoip.com is that, you know, uh, MSP IT services communications platform. And then MSPinitiative.com is like that communities based, you know, approach to the modern day, you know, circles in MSP IT land. So those are the three sites that, you know, kind of drive those three companies. I'm constantly out and about, I, I swear. You know, my wife tells me all the time, even though I give her my schedule months in advance, uh, <laughs> that I do not spend a lot of time at home. So we'll see how that goes in the 2023. But I am constantly out on the street, on the road, at events. So uh, you'll definitely, I know this is coming out afterwards, but yeah. uh, I spend a good amount of time in Florida <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in November and December through multiple events. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I just love, I love people. I love being out yeah. in, in the crowds and like experiencing life. You know, behind, you know, put your phone down, put it down. Yeah. And put your laptop screen down and like, let's look at each other. Screen. Yeah. George Bardisi, you have been a great guest. I'm so happy that we connected really through MSP initiative. I'm grateful that you came on the show to share your journey and experience. And what I want people that are listening to recognize that this is an individual that hasn't had to do 
hasn't didn't have to create MSP initiative, didn't have to start this other business, saw a moment, saw an opportunity to create better connection between people to solve a problem that people had and dove in and tried to do it. Does it always guarantee a successful outcome? No. Does it always guarantee learning and progress on the journey? Absolutely. And George, you helped us anchor on that philosophy and purpose today, which is so much of what it is about understanding how do I get in my genius zone? How do I do the thing that lights me up where I want to make a mark in this world? You are doing it. And I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. And uh, awesome. We'll see you. We'll see you soon. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great week. We will see you on the next episode of the Stride to Freedom podcast. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.